Today we're testing the shorter, the cross ball trainer. And it quick changes into using the same lacrosse ball as before, a bungee, more fast paced trainer. And both of these will cost about $3 as opposed to 20 or 30 that you can get on Amazon or any sports store. Interested? Here we go. I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna show you the cradle trainer, do a quick refresh on that, which is also gonna be posted down below and it's in this eye thing over here. And that shows you how to make the ball and some other things I've learned since I've been using the cradle trainer. And then we're gonna go into the bungee rebounder. So for the cradle trainer, you gotta have a ball like this. Now the reason why the cord 18 inches long because part of it's in the ball as you'll see in the other video on how to make this and this is rock solid this is 95 pound paracord doubled up so almost 200 pounds worth of force can be done on this thing and i really don't think anybody's going to get to that point but the reason why it's seven inches long here is so that you can run the ball through here and loop it on to either the cradle trainer cord or the bungee rebounder cord. I found out that the product I've listed below, I think it's Cradle Baby, they use 16 inches. When I built this thing, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, but I found it out a week or so ago just by chance. But I kind of like mine a little longer. 18 inches plus these two knots on the end, they're just overhand knots. So you're talking about 20 inches of cord, a little over three feet of cord, 38 inches of cord to make the cradle trainer. There you go. You take it like this and you wrap it around like this and it's rock solid. And this one just happens to have a groove. Not all of them do. This is, so it may slide back and forth like this. And if you don't want it this long, the great thing about this design is you can just loop it around as many times as you want to shorten it up to get it to that 16 inches or 12 inches or 8 inches or whatever it is. And then you've got the little loop on the end here. Run the ball in and boom, it's locked in. And this thing doesn't usually knot up. You'll see on the bungee rebounder that sometimes this will get balled up. So I had to change the design on that. But this is just thin enough that it just kind of rolls back and forth. For the bungee rebounder, you need one eighth inch bungee cord or a shock cord. You're gonna use the same ball from the previous build. Two cable ties, either four inch or six inch, totally up to you. Either one would work well. A pair of scissors. This is a flush cutter. I'll post it down below. It's very helpful. It's an excellent for all sorts of projects because it gets right in there close especially with cable ties, but any kind of cord, anything like that. And it's magical. And a little file, or you can use, and I'll post this down below. This is a cable tie tool. And the great thing about this is you can cinch it up real tight, and then you can hit this guy right here and cut it off nice and flush. This is pretty inexpensive, and I've used this for all sorts of builds. To include my tennis ball rebounder, which is fairly popular. And the last thing you'll need is some sort of butane torch so that you can melt and finish the end so it doesn't fray. Another option, if you didn't want to buy a whole spool of this stuff, is you can use these bungee laces or quick laces or speed laces that folks use in triathlons and things like that. We love them on our shoes. I'll post up here in the valuation of these. But you can see that I made my reflex ball for boxing the same strength value as this cord here. You just want to make sure that some, you have something that has a nice cover on it because you're going to kind of bang on it a little bit. So originally I had something along the lines of six feet, this seven to eight inches with this and around 32 inches once you loop this around for the bungee. And that was long, too long 
I thought for somebody like me, who's not an expert at this kind of stuff. So then I went down and I around a 40 inch piece right here for the end that goes towards the stick at the three inch mark and just do a simple overhand knot. And you want as short of a tail as possible without compromising it and having it unravel. Initially, I had two of those kind of ends and what would happen is this little tail would get in the way and sometimes it would all kind of get twisted and get in a little ball here like this. So I came up with this different approach. Now I guess you could put some heat shrink tubing over that to keep this from getting in the way a little bit more, but this worked out really well. And these are actually two six inch cable ties, but I'm gonna try the smaller one this time. And you just come around, you, first of all, you have to start the cable ties out. Just makes it easier than trying to hold all three things at the same time. And you want a small as loop as possible here. And you can see that the tail is almost non-existent. So that is my goal. So the first thing you do is you get the one that's closest to the tail here. And then I want it to sit on top, not on the side. See, even just by hand, I've cinched that down really good. Tightened it up, and then I'm just going to use the flush cutters. And, okay, so there's a little bit of an edge there, so I'm just going to take a real small file. And it's nice and flush, and you don't feel anything. And then if you were to use the bigger ones, and I have two. You could probably even get away with one, but I just wanted to be super safe. There's the loop, and you want to make sure you get enough tension on there. Pop it, and there. Flush and smooth. No ragged edge whatsoever. So that's what you got for the ball end. Then just slide it through like this, and you're ready to go out there. I've never seen this bungee wear out on my tennis ball rebounder. I've been using it for around 100 hours, and it pretty much looks the same as the day I put it on. Run it through like this, and you get it on the stick first. And then if for some reason you think that's too long, and you don't want to cut it down, you want to have a little more options, just like on the cradle trainer, you can just wrap the bungee around there a whole bunch of times. Then you put the ball on, boom, you're good to go. Now, when I was developing the ideal length here, I took the six footer and I actually just did a series of loops and it ended up being about a foot here, so two feet, and just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just like I did with my tennis ball rebounder to get the ideal length for that day. But then sometimes this thing has a, tendency to flick around too much and it's can be annoying so that's why I had the shorter version and it really you're, you're just talking a couple bucks to make two versions of the bungee so now it's time to go back outside and show you how this guy works well I'm always worried about safety as far as eyes go so I've got some shatterproof sunglasses on you could use safety glasses I would use a hockey helmet a lacrosse helmet you could put gloves on but I'm just kind of showing you how it is and in the shorter the distance the safer it is as far as coming back and hitting you so here we go Just like that. And if you lose it, just like that. By the way, if you watch any of my videos, I pretty much embrace the suck. But if you keep working at it again and again and again, you're bound to get better. And this helps you in all sorts of different ways taking all sorts of other challenges on that you've never experienced before. 
thumbs up and comments always appreciate thanks for watching if you're interested in sports builds of all kinds making and breaking things home repairs cosplay making props check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see